welcome to Bish's RV of Coldwater, Michigan, everybody. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and behind us, coming in uh, as we see it today at uh, 11,383 pounds dry weight, the Wolfpack 315 Pack 12. This is a long standing member of the Wolfpack family, and for good reason. 12 foot garage, 102 inch max width wide body, uh, just shy of 100 gallons of freshwater holding capacity, which is really good, I think, especially for something that um, this is an, an RV that it's not the biggest, it's not the heaviest, it's not the flashiest, but it is maybe one of the smartest options out there in the world of fifth wheel toy haulers because it checks all the really big boxes. I think personally pretty darn well. Like we've got a 30,000 BTU air system, 12 volt holding tank heater standard on these. Um, generator is optional on a Wolfpack. We're looking at a no gen version today, but they do offer an optional NPS generator, which uh, is something I really like because it provides clean power to the RV and has a pull start. So frankly, it is really hard to leave yourself stranded on this. And it will, they are gen prep standard, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. But what I like about this is the interior. Well. Frankly, let's back up a little bit. The full inside and outside in this one have gone through just a lightning and brightening, freshen it up kind of phase. Um, the skin package on this is much lighter than it was last year. Just gives it a, a, a little more kind of bright light, welcoming sort of feel. The wood tone package on the inside, I'm gonna call it like the honeycomb color package that Cherokee's gone with this year. I think it looks great. It, it's on the little bit lighter side of neutral. It's in that brown spectrum, but it's not like dark oppressive browns. And it's the kind of decor where if you wanna add a couple little color splashes, it works really well. Now, it's not the be all end all of RVs. I'm going to explain some things that are uh, maybe points of concern for you as we go. Like I'll go ahead and volunteer one here for you real quick. Um, you might see king bed on the floor plan schematic. It's a little bit of a short king and giving you fair points of information like that. That's what we're going to do through this whole video. And if you appreciate things like that, make sure you hit subscribe to catch us on the next one. In the meantime, let's get started. So first of all, as you may have noticed from the exterior, um, a, uh, a pretty significant facelift here, really not just on Wolfpack, on like the entire Cherokee family uh, of RVs. Um, the interior of this Wolfpack not as severely affected, although I do want to kind of point that out. Like, first of all, uh, let's talk, let's ask, what do you think about this new, um, you know, flooring? Now it's not like actual wood plank flooring. It is still like a, a lino or a laminate or a vinyl or whatever you want to call it. I like it though. I like, it's got nice, uh, warm wood kind of feeling to it. And, uh, this sort of like, I'm calling it honeycomb colored cabinetry, uh, throughout this honeycomb colored cabinetry. That's got like a nice little alliteration to it, doesn't it? It is, it's warm, it's lighter, but it, it you know, it, it's definitely in the HOA brown approved tones, but it doesn't, it's not dark. It, it's not oppressive. We still have the, uh, 30,000 BTU air system standard on this where you have dual 15,000 airs, uh, all kind of, uh, centrally ducted together. I'll get you a little bit of a look at up there in the loft in just a minute. They have also changed the uh, pass-through door. Um, before this had just a uh, like a, a very dark glass door, and uh, they switched that over to a wood door. I think just to kind of again, you know, give it that sort of warm, welcoming feel. Not super dark, not super industrial. This is an option that I think a lot of people are probably going to uh, apply to this uh, Wolfpack right here. By default, this would normally be a jackknife uh, sleeper sofa where it bifolds down with storage below. We're looking at the theater seat right there, and I'd kind of be curious to know which way you would like one of these. I think theater seat is probably the way I would go with it, too. We still have all those big windows, and with this being a toy hauler, it means you have that extra tall ceiling through the entire thing since the back can't really taper down since you, you know have uh, a garage back there. Now, I, I uh, you know what, let's go ahead. Let's just crack all this stuff over. Let's, let's start up there in that loft. Notice how it comes with a little uh, detachable ladder. Now you can use that to get uh, up to the uh, Happy Jack power bed lift in the garage, or obviously you could use it to get to that loft. One ladder can do two things. And because they mounted that off center, you can kind of um, still navigate under it to get, you know, from the living area into the garage without needing to take the ladder on and off. So if the person upstairs is thinking the ladder's still attached, you're not going, they, they won't be in for a rude awakening, uh, which would really be a rude awakening if they were sleeping up. You know what? I don't know if that joke landed. As a matter of fact, I think that joke kind of sucked. I will, uh, I'll work that out of my own time. <laughs> now, Good kitchen counter space in this one. You saw that's a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. There is a gas electric two-way swaption available for that if you are so inclined. Um, but again, one of the things that they've enhanced on this over the last couple seasons 
I think, is the entertainment center. And it's, that's especially obvious when you do uh, option in the, the theater seat like uh, we're looking at over here. Now, by the way, that is a wall guard. So that is mounted onto the floor. You don't have to wrestle it halfway out of the slide to be able to recline it like you saw. It sits in one place, and it just works the way you expect it to work. And that's not necessarily true of every sort of reclining situation you find in every RV. I'm going to sit you down here, put you on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place right across from the Entertainment Center. We're sitting at the right-hand theater seat. And what I like is if you choose to add a TV to this, it's like right where you want it. It's not up too high. There's a lot of RVs, especially in toy haulers. Actually, toy haulers is the first place I ever saw where they just mount TVs like all the way up at the ceiling. And, you know, even sitting here with the camera looking at the screen, even that's not a comfortable viewing angle or anything. And especially if you are reclining, that will be one heck of an electric space heating bunion burner right there. Now, um, you couldn't really see them from before. You, you'd look around at the kitchen and say, what, there's no outlets? Um, those would be your kitchen outlets over here. I kind of, personally, if I could change one thing in the survey, I'd sort of like a bank of outlets right there would work for me now they've done some interesting things not just in the decor like it's not just um the 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 updates this year the beauty is more than skin deep did you notice when we were looking at the entertainment center you didn't see a stereo they've gone away from that instead what they've done here is the entire rv can be bluetoothed to your phone or whatever and that's what this is right here so instead of a portable Bluetooth speaker, your phone can actually Bluetooth to the RV's speakers so that you can play whatever music or anything you want, like right from there. A lot of people are going to that. A lot of people are doing the cut the cord streaming movement. That's kind of the idea. And you may notice that they've changed over the control panel to that LCI um, one control system here, where you've got kind of the motion sensitive thing and the, you know, the, the various buttons, including um, an interior blue smurf led accent light button now last year i was very vocal about the fact that i thought that this blue right uh, blue light was uh, a very strong to the tune of almost overpowering and a lot of people all of a sudden start saying josh dude what is your problem with those blue lights um i kind of like them in my rv and i went you know what you're right. It's more than just necessarily what I like. It's what you enjoy. And my job is just to make sure that you get to see what is and what is not included in this RV. So let me know what you're thinking of it so far. We're going to mosey our way upstairs. One of the major improvements they made on this one about three or four years ago, though, is they added this door right here so that from the lower deck, you could get your way straight up into the bathroom, which is something you could not do before. Now, there's some great leg room around that porcelain foot flush to uh, toilet right there. Overall, that is about as fluffy friendly as you could ever hope for out of a uh, RV like this. And that is a serious lipid storage, storage, storage corner cabinet right there with some good, uh, well, capacity, cabinet storage capacity to it. We've got the XL Taco Tuesday 11-inch fan up here instead of the dollar store 4-inch fart fan. And um, the whole upper deck of this is nicely sized. Even with my shoes and my hat, I can stand in that shower very comfortably. Now, it is a radius shower. Wolfpack does a lot of those. Some people feel that they're a little bit too small for them. I'm of the personal, you know, body size that I can still, generally speaking, make them work pretty nicely. Uh, but, hey, that's me. That's not, <gasps> ooh, I forgot a big deal. Hold on, hold on. Let me get back up here. In this bathroom, you see that black and silver little circular thing? That is your water heater controller right there because one of the things they've done is they have changed this over to a tankless, on-demand water heating system so that uh, if you've ever dealt with a cold shower in an RV, no more. You're not going to have to deal with that anymore. Uh, you can take back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back hot showers and that. I don't care if you've got friends sleeping on the uh you know the, the sleeper situations in the garage that we haven't seen quite yet i don't care if you got a bunch of kids you can take a lot of back-to-back -back showers as long as you got propane and you've got a uh, battery 12 volt uh which on an rv like this uh, especially with a solar package you're pretty much always going to have you're going to be good now a couple things up here um the uh if if you look around the corner this is almost where you would expect to see tv hookups instead what you see is the thermostat and, uh, you know, a light switch for the ceiling. Look what they're doing at the windows, though. 
we're going to come back to the TV hookups. I realize I kind of jumped the shark right there like Fonzie. Instead of like, you know, roll down blinds, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a used RV come in on trade and nobody ever opens the windows. These are a lot heavier. They're a lot better at blocking out the sun. Um, you know, you can slide them off to the side if you want that bright, you know, kind of thing going on. But I think a lot of people are probably going to leave them exactly how we've left them up here. Just a theory, just a guess. The lighter woodwork, and I'm almost falling backwards down the stairs. Pardon me if the camera work got super shaky right there. Um, the uh, lighter woodwork does make this bedroom feel bigger. As I mentioned when we were outside, this is a short king. It's a 70 by 74 bed, so kind of keep that in mind. But I want to talk about this little power outlet right here real quick. Because that's another one of those new for 23 kind of things. This is now prepped for a, a quadruple Furion camera system. So rear camera, side views. And then when we get back to the garage, you'll see there's another Furion camera mount in the garage space. That's really going to serve two purposes. So... Um, the, the side view, the rear view cameras, I think you probably understand what those do just by their name, but the garage camera, what if you're going down the road and you hit like a wicked chalk hole or something, you want to make sure your cargo or whatever you have loaded in that garage is in place. You can use that handheld Furion monitor, which utilizes that plug, your a cigarette lighter, like we grew up, I don't, what, it's not called a cigarette lighter now, is it? What do they call that now? I never, I don't even know what to call it. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, it uses that as a handheld monitor. You can check to make sure like your Goldwing or your Harley or whatever hasn't fallen over on its side and everything's okay. Um, the other thing you can do with that is garages in toy haulers are very functional alternative bunkhouses. So if you've got kids back there, you can keep that handheld monitor up here with you at night. If you hear a funny sound or if you think the kids are arguing or something, you can actually grab that monitor and spy on your kids or family or friends or guests or whatever back there. Um, you know, when I phrase it like that, it sounds like it's kind of creepy. Spy on your family. Now we're looking backwards currently, like from the bed. Uh, if you, if you wake up and you're on the campsite of the RV and you're walking around the bed, this is what you'd see. That's where those TV hookups are located, by the way, above this little bonus hanging closet cabinet thing. We're going to get a look inside that in just a minute. Actually, tell you what. Let's start right here. Let's go ahead and open up uh, the uh, storage here in the bedroom. So you've got the hanging wardrobe towers on both sides of the bed. You've got like a full easy lift storage trunk below the bed. And then again, you have that bonus kind of third closet across from the bed. So this doesn't have an actual closet slide. It's, it's surprising. It almost seems like you don't think about it because the RV is a good size. It's actually only a one slide RV, but it kind of compensates for that in a couple different ways. Now, as you can see, we're still up in the bedroom. We're looking backwards, and you can obviously tell I have closed the slide out. Um, this one has potentially a decent road mode accessibility, depending on your personal physicality. Um, if I was any bigger, I don't believe I would be able to do what I'm about to do. Basically, if I scoop my butt and my belly where the TV should go, I can fit between the slide and the uh, entertainment cabinet. Now, how you fit in there and how I fit in there might be two different things. So de depending on your size, you might be able to get to the uh, bathroom and the bedroom without opening the slide. Now, right here, the dinette and the kitchen, they obviously come right up next to one another. So unless you're gonna do a Dukes of Hazard, yeehaw, and hop over that sucker or partially open the slide, it may really limit your uh, kitchen accessibility. Unfortunately, that is just a really common thing with toy haulers. Many of them, frankly, just have very limited travel access. It's not the first time I've seen something like this, but I'm not going to gloss over it just because it's not complimentary. I hope you appreciate the fact that we're willing to be very thorough, even when something isn't necessarily good news that we're reporting here. Now, real quick, before we get into uh, the exterior features and updates, I wanted to kind of go through this garage here. So this is a 12-foot-long garage from the back of the dovetail up to that front wall right there. And again, remember I told you you had the ladder for that loft. You could use it to get to the upper bed. I kind of have it just hanging there to give you the idea. You, you don't want to go climbing up and down that ladder when the bunk is not in the down position. But um, so we're, again, we're dovetailed for easy loading so you don't rip the pipes off your bike. Three quarter inch plywood floor, 15 tie downs in this thing, just plenty of spaces to tie it down. And of course, the flexible multifunction aspect of toy haulers is just, it's unparalleled. So 
Um, you know, you can fold these down. This could be like a double queen bed, basically alternative bunkhouse. You can get those things out of the way. The, the uh, sofas that we're looking at, they can ride against the sidewalls. They can ride uh, horizontally under that overhead bed. You have your choice between maximum loading width, maximum loading height, whatever you need, how you need it. You can flip the armrest out on the sofas. You can get, uh, you know, you can fold it away and get rid of it and have a six person kind of party spot. Um, there is a roll down tent screen wall on these. Uh, to my knowledge, Wolfpack is still not yet offering a three seasons wall. I know that a lot of, I've, I've seen a lot of feedback, a lot of questions asking that. So if that's a question you were going to ask and I more proactively answered that for you, leave me a little comment that says, hey, thanks for telling me about the wall there, nerd, or, you know, click the like button or whatever. Anyway, we still have the blackout snap-on uh, shades to keep the, uh, the sunshine and the looky-loos out of the way. We talked about that updated garage door. Um, again, we got the Furion four-way camera prep. So that if you want to see your load when you're on the road, brother. Hello. Was that a fly that just flew by me? Hello. Anyway, um, you get the idea. You can keep an eye on things back here. Also, you see washer dryer hookups back here, depending on what you're going to use this space for. Now, you may also notice there's a couple loose parts on the floor. They, they include this. So you saw the steps that we, we walked up a second ago, right? They include this so that if you want to, you can mount it. Like, let's say, uh, let's say you want to mount it on the wall here. Now, some people like it up here. Some people do not. So they ship you the mount in case you want to use it. Um, and, and I've actually seen some people just, I don't want to do that. I just want to leave it on the floor and I'll, I'll strap the steps to all these different tie downs or something like that here. They give you a bunch of different options so that it's like a choose your own adventure book. You can pick the way you want it to work. And it's um, <laughs> a toy hauler garage is like Burger King. You can have it your way. I don't know. I don't know if that sounds right, but it feels right. So first of all, let's talk towing. What is it going to take to haul one of these suckers down the road? So um, as I mentioned earlier, we have 11,383 pounds of dry weight. You've got to remember, though, uh, that you might be loading this loaded up. So all, fully loaded, it might weigh just over 14,000 pounds. Um, also, uh, as it sits here right now with a, a little over 2,200 pound hitch weight, you are going to make sure you need to have a truck that has the proper payload rating to be able to handle this. Now, the thing with toy haulers, they often have almost artificially heavy tongue weights, hitch weights, uh, because they're really intended to be loaded with something in the back end. Actually, a lot of RV delivery drivers that bring these to us totally dry and empty will report, man, these things don't necessarily haul very well. They're like, man, it pushes me down the road because it's kind of uh, hitch heavy. Having a good load in that garage will actually equalize that and help it handle uh, a lot better. Um, getting you over here, looking at a couple things. Uh, you see like all the water hookups and everything all in one spot right here. Cable satellite hookup, a black tank flush. Now you've got both a hot, cold outside Side utility shower as well as a cold water only sprayer port the reason that they're giving you both is because that's a little bit higher pressure and you could have one of those little garden hose attachments on it so if what you're trying to do is uh you know be able to spray off your quad or something if you've been mudding well you know it's a little more likely to do that notice that we do have a single uh stink pickle deployment station right here which is a technical term also notice how our black and our gray poles are all enclosed within the belly so the gate valves are protected underneath here we also do have uh holding tank heaters standard on these for your holding tanks so you're going to start asking the question yes but is it for seasons i don't believe so and uh, there's maybe a lot of people might tell you, yes, I'm going to be one of the people that tells you I don't believe it is. And that might mean that you might not want to buy this RV now. But I'm willing to share that fair, true information with you because I, the last thing I want is for you to spend a lot of money on this and then go have a very bad experience. And I, I'm not going to sacrifice my integrity that way. We're 102 inch wide body. And by the way, what do you think of the revised exterior on this? So last year they had like a darker gray skin. Um, if you look at this very closely, like they kind of called it a white exterior, but if you look at the graphics versus the skin itself, it's a very, very light platinum. So it's still living up to that Wolfpack platinum name. And actually, if I, I think if I get you up close here, uh, you can more easily see the difference between the, the, the decals, or as our Canadian friends call them, the decals, and that high gloss uh, sidewall over here. Now, if you look at this, this is a thing Wolfpack did last year. They have a mini drop frame. 
And here is why they did that. So that this RV could be generator prepped while still having, I think, a respectable front pass-through compartment. Now, again, what you're seeing there is uh, the standard generator prep. It does have an optional generator. It's an NPS uh, inverter generator, which is very cool because uh, it has a remote start. It provides clean power to all the RV's outlets and um, you, you can pull start it in case you like straight run out of fuel or something. Now, uh, looking in here, that's where you see that expanded pass-through that I mentioned. By drop framing the generator housing, it wasn't fighting with your storage area. Notice too, there was all kinds of tie-downs in there and it was a carpetless flooring uh, in that compartment. This is a major update that the Cherokee group as a whole has gone to. Tankless on-demand water heaters. Um, that is a Furion variety that we're looking at. That is something that when they first came out, I loved the idea, but it didn't seem like the technology was really ready for the RV industry, you know? And uh, they, they basically, they're just better now. They've continued to develop those things and they're operating better now than they used to. Notice how both entry doors are uh, nicely enclosed under that awning right there. Uh, the awning, if I'm operating from a little bit of memory here, I believe that is about 21 feet in total length. So not a small awning, it's just a really big sidewall on the RV. And no slides on the door side eating into your campsite or anything like that. And it seems like that's a fairly rare find in the world of fifth wheel toy haulers. That uh, very, you know, Cherokee family-centric compact camp kitchen where you've just got 10 pounds of sugar all wrapped up into a five pound sack. You got your little slide out two burner stove top with the gas grill cooker hooker right down below. Dad's medicine cabinet for the bottled water and the barley pop on the right and a nice maker to keep the party going on the left. And uh, basically, as long as you've got water and you've got power and between park power and that generator, you should have power coming into this thing. Uh, you should be good. Sorry about that. Sneeze came out of nowhere and I didn't want to blow your ears out. Um, oh, by the way, I mentioned that little high pressure sprayer hose, garden hose thing. It, it comes equipped with that. You can It comes with one that you can use on either side of the RV. Uh, you've got the four step stable steps going on right here. But as I back up a little bit, you might notice they don't use stable steps in the back because that's where the garage is. You know, it would fold in and eat into your loading space. So what they have are these little drop down stable feet. Um, Grand Design does that a lot, frankly. I'm a big fan of those things. I think that's a really smart way to go. Now, as we back up a little further, you see you got the uh, the leash lash there from a drunken Uncle Gary when he ties one on a little bit too much and we don't want him bothering the neighbors uh, any more than we can help it. Uh, standard ramp patio package on these. You see that the, uh, the uh, steps getting you up to that patio deck have been added onto this. Now, you might notice how the tailgate is like wide open where those steps are. There is a swing out gate uh, available, well, well, not available, equipped on that. As you see right over here, I just don't have it swung out, as it were. Up top here, we got a little flood loading light. We got our backup camera. And just to give you a look as to, uh, you know, what the ramp door looks like when it's in the up position, since for the most part of my video, you don't really get an opportunity to review that. Um, I also want to give Wolfpack some credit. They're one of the less expensive fifth wheel toy haulers on the market, and they actually take the time to fully set up and, and hook up the ramp patio package, including those, uh, you know, those cable supports right there. It's amazing how many brands for way, way more money don't do that. Now, last year, they took a lot of heat for the fact that they removed, I mean, totally removed all roof ladder prep on them. Now, you might notice up here, what they've gone to is one of those uh, telescopic ladder mounts. You're going to see, I think, a lot of members of the RV industry uh, adopt to that. One thing I noticed, is the telescopic ladder that I have was a little too short. It didn't quite reach the ground when it was hooked up right there. Um, I would, I, I haven't verified this yet because it kind of took me by surprise at the time of this recording. I'd like to believe that there are longer versions of those ladders. So if you buy one, make sure that you're figuring out how long of one you need. Uh, right there, we have ourselves a, a 30 gallon fuel station. Now that is shared by the way, it's a single fuel cell that is shared with the um, uh, generator prep. One of the other nice things here, you got yourself the stinky, slinky tube carrier so you don't got to worry about getting pink eye by mixing that with your picnic stuff. So what do you think? Let us know what, uh, how the uh, the 2023 updates are kind of feeling for you. Did they nail it? Did they fail it? Uh, did they not go far enough? Did they overdo with anything? What do you think about the new solar package, the ladder mount, all that stuff? Uh, what do, you, do you like the decor inside and outside? 
Do you hate it? <laughs> Either way, let me know in the comments section, and I'd love to be able to provide that uh, feedback to the factory. And remember, uh, when you're ready, we're ready. In the meantime, I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability on these. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.